Okay, guys, how you guys doing? How's everybody doing? Here, kid, 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 kid. All right, folks, invite people, invite your friends, your enemies, because I know some of you have more enemies than friends, right? So invite them. We'll begin in prayer in a minute. My cat's here. Hopefully, it won't be acting up. Okay, we'll begin in a word of prayer. Just to let you know what's happening. In about half an hour, I will be on Discord. But the agreement was I'd be live streaming on my YouTube channel and recording the discussion. I'm invited to a Discord channel i'll give you the link in a minute where it's run by a christian and the christian asked me to come in and to answer questions and ask questions of the muslims there on any topic i wanted so i said tawhid we're going to talk about tawhid and we're going to talk about the chronic view of the bible so the reason why i decided to live stream just in case it gets out of hand just in case the christian mods there are not able to control the discussion I'll have my Skype open so the Muslims can call me on Skype, or just in case it's a setup. So I don't know. I'll give you the link. We're going to pray, but here's the link. It's called the Philosophical Checkmate. That's what it's called. The gentleman who invited me is Joshua Bakradze. Bakradze, Philosophical Checkmate. And here's the link. So I guess the Muslims come on. And he says he's a Christian who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. So he invited me to come and answer questions and present challenges. And I said, on these two topics. So here is the link to the Discord. In half an hour, well, we just started Act 17 Apologetics. If someone like you can get half a million subscribers and get about 1,000 to listen to you, and you're boring as hell, and it took you over 10 years to do it, Act 17 Apologetics, then, Lord Jesus willing, by the grace of Jesus Christ, if the Lord Jesus keeps us healthy and holy in love with Jesus, give me eight years and you'll be eating my dust. They'll see David who? Oh, that David that even Yasser Qadi says he's a nasty jerk. Hey, guys, by the way, before we begin prayer, did you see that even Yasser Qadi, Yasser Qadi could see through the arrogance of of David Wood, that David Wood pretends to be nice because he doesn't want to lose subscribers. For him, it's all about numbers, right? So he's going to be nice. But we who know him behind the scenes know he is the most arrogant, nasty jerk. And Yasser Qadi saw it, man. <laughs> Isn't that Even Yasser Qadi, man, he goes, that man is no Christian. That man can't be a Christian. Nasty, arrogant. See, David? People are seeing through your facade. Surprise, David. Did you guys see that, right? Just watching one clip of David, he could see the arrogance. It's like just oozes out of his pores, just like ugliness oozes out of his pores. He's just as proud as he is ugly, and you know that means he's super proud. Because if ugly was a crime, this guy would be given 50 life sentences, right? And he'd be taken to the chair 10,000 times at the very least. <laughs> right? But that was funny. I, I actually busted out laughing when I was watching Yasser Qadi saying, nasty, arrogant. I couldn't even listen to Wallahi. I'm like, dude, a man after my heart. Man, just become a Christian. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Fall in love with the Lord Jesus, Son of God. And I'll join you in getting this guy out of social media altogether because he's hideously ugly and proud, proudful, right? But anyway, Lord Jesus willing, we're going to get our numbers up by the grace and mercy of Jesus. I want quality people, a large number of quality people, not those who are dictators like David Wood, who pontificate on matter, matters they have no business pontificating on, right? So anyway, with that said, in about... Let's see, what time is it? 2.35. In about 25, no, no. In 20 minutes, I'm going to go on Discord. Here's the link. So we'll see how that goes. I'm recording it just in case it gets out of hand and the mods can't control the Muslims. And if the mods can't control the Muslims, I'll just invite the Muslims to come to my Skype and call in so we can engage on the topic. Tawheed, 
the two topics, Tawheed and Muhammad's view of the Holy Bible. Those are the two topics I suggested and he accepted. We're going to talk about Tawheed and Muhammad's view of the Bible, Lord Jesus willing. So let's ask the Lord to bless and ask the Lord Jesus to fill us. It's been two days since I did a live stream. Y'all go follow the Holy Spirit. Y'all go follow the Holy Spirit. Here, guys, so let's share this miracle story. Kefi up. Kefi up. It says, I prayed for a Bible. And literally 17 hours later, yes, 17 hours later, some Christians knocked on my door and they were offering free Bibles in our building. Still can't believe it. Did you guys hear that miracle story? I'm going to repeat. Kefi up. Another miracle. You may think it's something minor, but these are huge because God is alive. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is risen. And because he's real, he's almighty to save. He answers our prayers, those who are close to his heart, because he loves us. So now, notice what Kefiah prayed for, not to hit the lottery or to get a half a million subscribers to their YouTube channel like Cater Wood. Notice Kefiah prayed to have God's word in his or her hand because they want the word of God to read it, to study it, to love it, to obey it. In order to worship and love the God of the Bible in the manner prescribed in his word, the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit. So glory to the triune God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus, that he answered prayers miraculously. Let me read it again. Kefi up. I prayed for a Bible and literally 17 hours later, yes, 17 hours later, some Christians knocked on my door and they're offering free Bibles in our building. Still can't believe it. Now, Kiffy up, I just want to ask you a question before we get in prayer. What version of the Holy Bible they gave you? Our Lord lives. Jesus is alive. He's risen. He's the Lord of glory. I'm just curious. What kind of version of the Bible you got? Oh, man. Darn it. My phone. Wow. A King James Version Bible. Holy Bible. King James Version. Now, for me... That's music to my ears because I've already come to the conclusion. The King James Version of the Holy Bible is God's perfect word in English. The perfect words, preserved words of God for English speakers, I believe, are in the King James Bible. The King James Bible is God's perfect words in English. That's my belief. I don't condemn anyone for following any other version. But that's what I believe in. Glory to the triune God. Glory to the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Wow, my friend. Now, real quickly... Vanessa, why? Do you like the NR, NRSV, Vanessa? I, I asked you last time if you're a Syrian, right? And you said you're not. Your name keeps throwing me off, Abu Samra. Samra, isn't that the father of yellow? I think I asked you the question last time, right, Vanessa? Abu Samra means the fa father of yellow, so it means you're a blondie? Right? Okay, that's right, Abu Samra. But remember, there are a lot of Assyrians who settled in Lebanon, who are actually Assyrians, but they may have forgotten their roots. But what's more important, glory to the triune God, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, that you're in love with Jesus Christ, and you worship the Lord Jesus Christ, the God-man. Now, I was going to ask a question. Look, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, it, it brings up some jokes, okay, guys? Don't be offended, because we're waiting to go live and answer the Muslims, right? Some blondie jokes, right? Hey, hey guys, I want to see you. Date yourself. You guys remember? Hey, blondie, you want to do my laundry? You guys remember that? And how many of you can remember that line? Hey, blondie, you want to do my laundry? Because I want to see. Date yourself. Because that was a saying we used to use all the time growing up, you know? <laughs> I'm, born, I'm born 1972. 1972, so in the late 70s, early 80s, that's what we'd hear grown-ups say, Whoa, what's up, blonde? You want to do my laundry? Hey, mama, whoo, got some fries with that shake? Am I dating myself? Am I dating myself? How many of you guys remember those sayings, right? Hey, you got some fries with that shake? <laughs> these are some of the stupidest things, man. Boy, were they stupid. No wonder these guys were single, out in the streets, vir virtually homeless. With lines like that, you wonder why you never get a date. Hey, blonde, you want to do my laundry? Hey, mother, you want another? <laughs> right? 
Oh boy. Anyways, yeah, yeah, that was my time. Anyway, let's begin in prayer. So Abu Samra, father of the blondes, the tanned ones. Hey, tan, I'm your fan. Let me see what. Hey, tan, I'm your fan. Oh yeah. Hey, tan, I'm your fan. I want to be your man. Oh, I want to be your man. I want to be your man. Did I hey, see that rhyme? Right. I'm a prophet. I'm a poet. Now you know it. What's up, Tan? I'm a fan. Can I be your man? Get rid of the zero. Get with the hero. Blonde, I'll do your laundry any time of the day. All right, anyway. Okay, let's begin. Are we ready? Let's ask the Lord to show up. Let's pray. All joking aside, let's pray by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ because I need the Holy Spirit to fill us. It's been two days. And I just got to be honest with you, Thursday Thanksgiving was so rough for me. It was very rough for me because even though I went to my oldest brother's house, it's not the same. My brother, his wife, his two daughters are now fully grown and they have family of their own. They got five grandchildren. So it was beautiful to be with my oldest brother's family, but it's not the same. It really isn't. When you know you have two daughters, a 10-year-old, 8-year-old, who are your heart from the Lord Jesus Christ, in another state, in the arms of another man on Thanksgiving Day, right? So it wasn't easy for me, guys. So I know. I'm not trying to get into a pity party and appeal to emotion, but it's, it's not the same, right? It won't be the same unless and until Jesus Christ brings them into my life and I can be with them every day and see them grow up and fall in love with Jesus. But at the end of the day, and this is the truth, I don't live for them. They don't live for me. They're not my life. I am not their life. They live for Jesus. I live for Jesus. Our life is Jesus and our lives belong to Jesus Christ. I was raised in a broken home. Dad wasn't around and my mom didn't know how to verbalize love, and she would get up in the morning, 5 in the morning, and work all day and be there at 6 p.m. <clears throat> so pretty much I was in the streets, broken, and yet Jesus still found me. Jesus still set me apart. Jesus still revealed himself to me and flooded me and continues to flood me in his love, his peace, and joy. And by the blood of the Lord Jesus, his blood, he is making me whole slowly but surely he is healing me and restoring me psychologically, emotionally, physically, and spiritually until I am complete and perfect by his grace, by his mercy, by his love, by his power, by his spirit. So it's a daily thing. My point being, just like I was raised in a broken home, but Jesus found me and saved me from this world and Satan and from my own brokenness, and he's healing me. I'm still not completely healed, but he's healing me to be more like him and to be more in love with him <clears throat> because he is our love, our life, our joy. He is the meaning of our existence, right? He will be there for my daughters and do the same thing for them in Jesus' name. Now, hope of all the Holy Spirit. Right? So Thursday was very hard. <clears throat> it was hard because I was all alone. And when I'm alone, my pattern to self-medicate is I stuff myself. And then I struggle with carnal, fleshly desires, lusts. So pray for me that the Lord Jesus will give me perfect victory over my flesh to die and crucify my lustful, sinful passions and to walk in the spirit and never gratify my flesh. And the Lord Jesus, have mercy on us all and forgive us all. Have mercy on me and forgive me to never fail him, to be a doer of his word, to truly love him and obey him. And by my obedience, proving that I love the Lord Jesus Christ. It didn't help that four days ago, I got into a heated shouting match with my ex and her fiancé because he decided to become a tough guy on the phone, took my daughter's phone, telling me that they're his daughters, and then telling my youngest daughter I'm jealous. Well, the Jilu came in, and I lost my testimony, pretty much. I don't think I've ever cussed out someone the way I cussed them out. And I've asked the Lord Jesus to forgive me because they're not worth me losing my testimony. May God save them. But no one is <clears throat> worth you losing your testimony. But brethren, it's hard. When you have two angels 
that God has given you to be their protector and you can't protect them and you have a filthy adulterer telling you on the phone in broken English because he can't speak English. They're my daughters. And then brainwashing your youngest saying, I'm jealous supposedly of their relationship. It is very easy to succumb to your flesh and forget that you're a Christian. So the Lord Jesus, forgive me. I'm not justifying it. But my friends, there are demons out there that know to press the right buttons to make you disappoint Jesus. So I need your, your prayers. So, Father, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. And forgive us, Father, when, you, when we fail you. Give us power to overcome our flesh and Satan and his children. And not fail you, Babi. Ya Allahi, ya Babi, ya Khay, ya Khubi, ya Libbi, Allahan, u Baban, u Khayyan. Our Father, our God, our heart, our life. We love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. Lord Jesus, forgive us. Lord Jesus, wash us in your blood. And by your blood, make us whole. Heal us spiritually, emotionally, psych psychologically, and physically. And fill us with your love. To love you truly. Because you deserve... <clears throat> That we love you perfectly and obey you perfectly and live for you perfectly and die to ourselves. Lord Jesus, help us to love you the way you deserve to be loved. Not that you need us, we need you. And help us to love one another, to love each other as an expression of our love for you, Lord Jesus. And fill us with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you. We worship you. We glorify you. We need you. We depend on you. Holy Spirit, take over the session. Take over the conversation. Save us from our flesh. Crucify our flesh. Save us from Satan and his children. Save our loved ones. Save my daughters. Holy Spirit, they are your possession. We are your possession. You own us and we su submit to you. We <clears throat> yield to you. We surrender to you, Holy Spirit. And I ask you for the glory of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Loosen my tongue. Please save me from confusion, stammering and stuttering. And save me from misinformation, from error, from misinterpretation. And Holy Spirit, fill my heart. My cells, my body, my, my chest, my throat, my lungs, my voice with health, the health I need to use it to glorify my God and Savior, my love, my heart, the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Strengthen my voice and perfect my ability to recall the scriptures. Save me from confusion and forgetfulness and use these gifts that you've given me to glorify Jesus, not for the praise of men. Purify my motives, please, Holy Spirit. Save me from my hypocrisy. Save us from our false sense of humility and false sense of piety. Save us from being liars and deceivers and hypocrites, but to be true, holy, humble servants of the Lord Jesus, truly in love with him. When no one is watching, only you, that's when it matters. And to love the Lord Jesus by our deeds and love our neighbors by our deeds. Help me in that area, Lord, Lord God Almighty. Help me in that area, Holy Spirit. Help us in that area, Lord Jesus. Help us in that area, please, Father. And make my voice pleasing to your servants, your children who are gathered, Father. And save us from the distractions. Save us from attacks of Satan. Bless the internet connection. And help me to destroy the lies of Muhammad, that filthy dog of the devil who's burning in hell. He is damned to hell because he's an antichrist. Father, save Muslims from him. Lord Jesus, save Muslims from him. Holy Spirit, save Muslims from this wicked dog, Muhammad. And that's what he is. And help us not to be politically correct. And not to be ashamed of speaking the truth. And convict Muslims not to get offended, but to see the truth of whom Muhammad is. Because once they see, they will realize that we do this not because we hate them, but because we love them for the sake of the Lord Jesus. Have your way, please, my God. Yehovah, wash us in the blood of my God and save the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Yehovah, Father, Holy Spirit. Beatify me, my God. Father, Holy Spirit. Give us victory over the flesh, over gluttony, sexual morality. Keep us perfectly self-controlled, self-disciplined to increase in self-discipline and self-control for the glory of the Father, the glory of the Lord Jesus, the glory of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, watch me, Lord, and save the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, I got some articles for you guys. We're about to call. I got five minutes. We're going on Discord. Here's the Discord link. Here's the Discord link. I'll be going on Discord in five minutes. And in case it gets out of hand, I'm inviting the Muslims to come on Skype. That's why I'm streaming this. A Christian brother, a Christian brother in the Lord Jesus Christ reached out to me. He's got a discord. He wants me to answer questions and bring up challenges. And I said two topics, Tawheed and Muhammad's view of the Bible. And he agreed. But I got some articles I've written for you guys. Here it is. Hot off the press. 
El Quran, Islam's uncreated savior and mediator. El Quran, I'll be doing topics on these articles. El Quran, what is that? Islam's uncreated savior mediator. I prove from the Islamic sources, specifically the Sunni sources, that the Quran is depicted as a living conscious being that speaks to Allah, that worships Allah, that prays to Allah, and will save Muslims on the last day by interceding for them. So here I show that the Quran is Islam's savior and mediator. So click on that link, folks. Another article related to this is the following. What about Jesus? Unveiling Islam's other ilah besides Allah. Hot off the press. In this article... Here's the link in this article, right? I prove from the Quran and Hadith that the Lord Jesus Christ is depicted as the eternal uncreated word of Allah and the spirit of Allah who became flesh. As such, I bring out the implications of the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad, according to Sunni sources, that if Jesus is the uncreated eternal word of Allah and a spirit from Allah who became flesh, then Jesus Christ must be God in the flesh, so he must be Islam's other ilah. Now, Lord Jesus willing, if you guys are interested, save those articles, study the arg arguments, make it second nature, use them in your evangelism and debate, disseminate this information. I say it in every session. You have my full authorization to take my sessions, the articles I write, upload them to your sites, to your channels, make clips, translate them. But one thing you must do, study them. If you're not studying them, you're robbing yourself of gold that you can use to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ, destroy Islam and all false religions, and sharpen yourself and strengthen your faith and the faith of your brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I was able to hunt down a response written by J. Smith and his colleagues. 101 cleared up contradictions in the Bible. This was written in the late 1990s. J. Smith and his partners in ministry responded to the 101 contradictions that Shabir Ali raised against the Holy Bible in one of the debates he had with J. Smith in the 90s where he gave him a booklet, and Jay Smith said, I don't have the answers now, but we will provide answers to every one of your contradictions in due course. And glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jay Smith is a man of his word. He did it. Here it is. Now, the problem is the 101 cleared up contradictions were posted on his website that's now defunct. You can't find it. So because of archive, I found it, and now I posted the thorough refutation to these 101 supposed contradictions in God's perfect word, the Holy Bible, the inspired word of the Lord Jesus Christ, on my blog. It's now there for perpetuity. So there you have it. Read the responses to these so-called contradictions in the Holy Bible. So there you have it, folks. Material. Now, one thing else I want to ask you guys, if you're interested. If you're interested, I can do a session tonight. Tonight, what I wanted to do is a session proving Muhammad confirmed that the Lord Jesus Christ is the servant of Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42 happens to be one of the prophecies that Muslims have now hijacked and butchered in order to make it a prophecy of Muhammad. Now, just last week, David Wood and I did a session refuting, in fact, decimating the shameless butchering of Isaiah 42, proving it has nothing to, to do with Muhammad, but that Isaiah condemns Muhammad as an antichrist, a false prophet, a son of the devil. Lord Jesus willing, I want to come back and do a session where not only do I provide further proofs and reiterate the evidence we already used in that session, that it's Jesus Christ, our Lord, who's the servant of Isaiah 42, not Muhammad, but show that even Muhammad testified, albeit unwillingly and unknowingly. He didn't know he was doing this. But what Muhammad said about Jesus shows that Jesus is definitely the servant of Isaiah 42. Are you guys interested if I do one tonight? Now, tonight, by tonight, I mean midnight, 12 a.m. New York time, 12 a.m. Michigan time, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard time. 
Now, if you're interested, the other part of the continent in Europe will be early enough for them to be awake. If you're interested, I want to see a large number of quality people. We got now about 350. I pray it grow, increases. Lord Jesus, bring thousands for your glory. People want to learn. Then I want you to come in droves tonight. So if you're interested, Lord willing, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York Time, <clears throat> Michigan Time, we'll do. Muhammad confirms Jesus is the servant of Isaiah 42, Lord willing. Now that said... Let me get on Discord. Pray, guys, that it's fruitful and that Jesus Christ, our Lord, will be glorified. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. Mods, keep an eye on the channel. If we got demons, block them. Okay, I'm here. It says Islam debate. Right. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Uh, Mr. Shamoon, can you hear me? Call me Sam, buddy. You make me feel too old. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, Sam, I want to thank you so much, uh, uh, brother. I mean, uh, for, uh, doing this. Sorry. Ben, ben, ben. Uh oh. Okay. What was that? Okay. Sorry. Was that the trumpet? It's fine. We. Is that the trumpet? We have trolls. We have the trolls. We we take care of. We have. Um, okay. But here's my question. We have. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Was that one of the seven trumpets yes. of Revelation? Is it the end? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Sh Mr. Too funny. Stop calling me Mr. Uh, Shahoon. Uh, I'm Sam. And this no, guy... no, no, no. Oh, my goodness. And, hey, um, okay, you got someone called yeah, Sam Mr. Shampoo Mr. here. Mr. Huh? Shamoon, yeah. can I give you a prayer in Korean? I want you to like, repeat it. Who, who is that? Who is that talking? Who is that talking? Oh, the shepherd. Oh, wow, you guys are unbelievable. Yeah. Talk about chaos here. Okay, I'm sorry. We're, we're trying to... We're, we're... Have okay, now, hey, my friend, so get, get rid of uh, my friend, you got some nasty, filthy scum here that have nasty mouths. Like this guy just said, this guy is writing Sam Shimon's meat. Who's this filthy scum that's talking like this in this channel? Uh, he's gonna get banned. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, right here, Beetlejuice, filthy scum bastard okay, whose bye mother bye. didn't teach him any okay, manners. Bye bye, Beetlejuice. Whose okay. mother didn't teach he's him any banned. manners. Yeah. Uh, any, I think just to lock the channel if they if they keep keep coming, you know. Uh huh. We'll Assyrian uh, Challenge. 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 Let me see. So you're changing the rules even before I began. So that's why I'm going to block you, right? Oh. Let's try this again. Let's try it again. Do you remember I have the comments saved? I said, I'm going to come in. We're going to talk about Tawheed, and we're going to talk about Muhammad's view yeah, yeah. of the Bible. I'm going to ask questions of the Muslims to answer. What response? Yeah. Response to what? Yeah, go, go ahead. That, that's that's what we want to. That's what we want to do. Now. So yeah. So now, if you have Mohammedans here, I want them to get ready with their Quran because I'm going to start with Tawheed because I'm going to show them their yes. Quran doesn't teach Tawheed. It teaches actually polytheism or that Allah consists of multiple persons. So I want the Muslims who are brave enough to get ready to answer. So are they here? You got any okay. Muslims brave enough to answer my yeah. objections? Yes, all the Muslims are here. They are currently muted. They will go on unmute when you're uh, when they're ready. Well, uh, let me know which Muslim wants to take me first because I want him to open up his okay. Quran. Okay, uh, so who's the first one up? Uh, please go ahead. Uh, I, I have a question. I have a question. Why okay, did you sorry. beat your wife? Okay. Bye. Uh, the same sorry. Reason, oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't block him. Same reason why Aisha got beat by Muhammad as he was molesting her when she was nine playing with dolls, that filthy scum bastard. Same reason. So go ahead. Yeah, it is. Uh, but you got to follow the Quran. The Bible doesn't teach that. Yeah. No, but I'm trying to be a good Muslim. So are you saying that the Bible doesn't no, teach No, no, no. You're going against the Bible. The Bible okay, doesn't so teach that. Okay, so I want to follow Muhammad. I want to be. Don't the Bible, talk over bro. me. I want to follow Muhammad. I want to be a bastard like Muhammad and beat my wife like your prophet beat Aisha. I love Sam. I love Sam. I love Sam. I love Sam. I love. Hey, buddy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my stream. They can call me on Skype because you guys are ridiculous. You're out of control. you got no control in this in this Discord. Yeah, no, we, ha we, ha we have the control. We have the control now. Wait, uh, Sam, um, yeah. may I ask you something very quick? Uh, no. 
Are you ready to open up your Quran and answer my question? Because we're wasting time now. So are we ready? Go ahead. Are we ready, start. guys? Or am I wasting yes. time here? Because I'm not here to play patty cake. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's fam. Are we ready? Because yes, I'm live streaming I'm this. Already. Yeah. I'm live streaming this. It's on my YouTube channel because I anticipated that maybe it wasn't going to go well. So I'm going to have my Skype open for these stone lickers to call in and defend their God. Are we ready? So we don't play games? Yes, sir. Okay, which Muslim wants to now answer questions for me? So let him get first dibs because he's going to open his Quran and then defend his deen. Are we ready? Which one? Ex-Christian, you're the first one up. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> Are you ready? This sucks. Uh, okay. okay, open Surah uh, Al-Maryam. Open chapter yeah, 19. Yeah. Uh, open chapter 19 of the Quran. We're wasting time. I won't, wait, I won't bring my Quran. Can, can you just win like uh, one minute? Uh, uh, I won't one, take time. He's a troll. Uh, no, no, no. Four, please, thousand, please, please. Five, I five, won't thousand, take that. Six, six thousand, seven, seven thousand, eight, eight thousand, nine, nine thousand, ten, ten thousand, one, one thousand, two, two thousand, three, three thousand. Are you ready? Yes, yes. I just, I just brought my Quran. Sorry, I'm so and, sorry. And, man. And this I'm is so the guy sorry. supposedly ex-Christian. So he went from ex-Christian to being a stone licker. Okay. All right, open up yes, your Quran, chapter you nineteen. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, are you in? Are you in? Uh, are you in chapter nineteen, man? Before, before uh, the Mahdi sorry, shows up. So before the Mahdi shows up. Are you ready? Uh, which Mahdi? Uh, uh, the one that your fake prophet said yeah. would come from his family line named Muhammad uh, and ruined for seven years. Okay, the, go to chapter which, nineteen. Stop licking the stone. I ain't gonna help you. Open to nineteen. So you want me to spell it out, Surat Al-Maryam? You're wasting time. Open Surat Al-Maryam. Okay, ex-Christian, final chance. If you haven't opened by now, you're going to move on to the next Muslim. I'm um, so sorry. I, I, can, I, can I be the third one to uh, answer, no, can the, you, answer can the question? Can you be the third one in line to smooch the black stone? Yes. Get, get out of here, dude. Give me someone to waste man, the time here. Can I just say something? No. You guys have the privilege of having this man in your VC, in this server. You guys would really... Okay. We're moving on. Wow, well, imagine you did not Okay, guys. Hey, God bless you guys. I'm going to my YouTube channel. I'll see you guys later, man. Thanks for the waste of time. All right. Take care. See you, White Peter. Yeah. All right, there you go, guys. Okay, there you go. Waste of time, right? Then I tell you it's gonna be a waste of time. Yeah. The Christians can't and can't even control uh their Discord. Anyway, guys. Are right, you guys ready? White beater. Yeah, see, here's what's ironic. These filthy, stone-licking, woman-raping, women-whoring Mohammedans accuse me of being a white beater, which is a lie from the pit of hell. But what does that say about Muhammad then? If I'm a white beater and they're condemning me, then they just bury Muhammad in hell? That means they should go to Medina and spit on Muhammad's grave and say, you son of the devil, how dare you beat your wife? See, they think they're getting, they're, they think they're getting to me. Oh, the snack bar. Okay, anyway. Now, with that said, guys, we have now an entire free session, right? Wait, uh, someone says, Canadian Catholic, the moderator of that Discord, reported NT's video. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Well, there was another guy on their, on their Discord that I don't like. His name is A Syrian Prince. He's a very wicked troll. He's an arrogant little punk. We got him to leave the discord, you know, roasted potatoes and he's there. So I knew him, him being there, we're going to have troubles. Now for the rest of you, we can talk about Isaiah 42. If you're interested, we can do it right now. We got a good crowd guys. I want to stay 450, man. I don't want you guys to drop. No visa. You don't need to apologize. Vice versa. Did you, you think I was born yesterday? I wasn't born yesterday. I was born the day before. So why do you think I already went live? On my YouTube because I knew this was gonna happen you guys think I'm stupid well if you think I'm stupid you'd be partially right but I'm not as stupid as David I'm not born yesterday I was born the day before I already knew I already knew to make sure to go live on my live stream to have this recorded as record because I already suspected things would go wild in their discord channel so was I right you see Man, bro, I'm more of a prophet than Muhammad, that wife beater, that woman raping, woman prostituting, 
pedophile. Glory to Jesus Christ. You see why I did this? I've learned the hard way. That's why I said I'm going to live stream on my YouTube channel to have this recorded. Yay! Well, I'm a can. What a kind of money. Uh. Yeah, so Sophia Films is warning against Catholic, Canadian Catholic. He's another troll who <clears throat> tries to get fellow Christians in trouble masquerading as a Christian because he's a disgrace too. Anyway, everyone, are we ready to talk about Isaiah 42? Now, the problem is before we talk about Isaiah 42, I need some mods to post verses for me. Are we ready? Man, that wasn't what, not even 10 minutes? Not even 10 minutes, right? Okay, who's here from the mods that post verses? Just curious, I'm trying to feel this out. Because I don't want to waste your time. You guys are all here, 450 people. You, are you sure Prophet Google is going to take you like 20 minutes to post one, one word from one line, from one verse? Mashael al Saif, are you from that server? Are you from that server? Were you like part of it? Shant, it's not LMAO. We say LMBO here, no ace. Laugh my buttocks off, not laugh my aspirations. Yeah, no, don't worry. Yeah, they're, they're a joke. I, it, uh, Michelle, do you see why I decided to live stream this? You see why I decided to live stream this? Because I know I've learned once not to trust anyone, even those who claim to be Christian. So what did I do? I live stream as now a recorded evidence, recorded witness, recorded witness. See that even the Christians have no control over their servers. <clears throat> and you see how he tried to change the agreed format, right? You see how he tried to change it? What did we agree to? I'm going to come and ask questions about Tawheed and what the Quran, what Muhammad said about the Bible. He says, oh, you make your case and someone will respond. You see how he tried to uh, change it in midstream? And this is a Christian now. This guy, his name is Joshua Bakrats, Bakratsi. He's supposedly a Christian now who told me, yeah, 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 you can come ask Christian. And he tried to change the format. You see? Snakes, even those who claim to be Christians. Snakes. And I know he's a snake because the guy that's there, a Syrian prince, he's one of the biggest snakes you'll meet. And I'm, sadly, unfortunately, he's a Syrian like me and, and a professing Christian. Sadly, he's a snake. We ran him out of roasted po potatoes because he's a snake, a vile snake. So be careful of now this server, guys. Stay away from this, this Discord server called, <clears throat> let me show you again, Philosophical Checkmate. And beware of a Syrian prince. I don't know what his name is there. I didn't even bother to look. And Joshua Bakratzi, because you see, these men cannot control their own Discord, and you can't take them at their word. Anyway, Prophet Google, you ready? You guys ready to talk about Isaiah 42? No, he didn't call me a white beater. It was the Muslims. Let me see. We'll talk about Isaiah 42 if you're interested. All right. Are we ready? Because Prophet Google says he's going to try to take less than 20 minutes to post one line from one sentence from one verse. Usually it takes him like 50 minutes. He said he's going to try his best. So now that when he quotes a verse, each line will take him less than 20 minutes. He said he's going to try to do that. Are we ready, guys? Because if we're ready, I need your undivided attention. Lord Jesus, keep them coming. I hope we don't lose numbers. We get numbers for the glory of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and I'm Shikha, Okay, Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Let's see. Is this guy calling me now? All right. Hopefully he won't, he won't be bothering me. Is Isaiah 42 a prophecy of Muhammad? Let me first read it. What version are you using, prophet? What version are you reading? I bet you if you go to that Discord, now the Christians are bad-mouthing me, especially that snake, a Syrian prince. He's a snake. Be careful of him. Hold on. Let me just get the Bible up. King James Version? Okay. I'm going to read Isaiah 42.
I'm going to read Isaiah 42 from the New King James Version, and then we're going to break it down. Yep, Assyrian Prince, Robert. Yep, that's him. Is that you? Are you Assyrian Prince? Because your name is Robert. Assyrian Prince's real name is Robert. Is that you? You snake? Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, good. You kind of, you kind of scared me. A Syrian prince. Sorry. Let's read, guys. Let's focus now. Let's not be distracted. I don't want to waste this time or your time. Let's glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Let's glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we ready now? Can you help me to help you and stay focused? Don't let Satan distract us. My God, bring them for your glory in droves to listen for the glory, honor, majesty of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. Let's go. I'm going to read. Isaiah 42. I'm going to read the first eight verses. I'm going to read. You don't need to pro post, Prophet Google. Uh, the same, uh, guys, can you wait before you block these guys? Can you wait? Can you unblock H so I can... Anyway. I'll probably end it right here, man. Okay, H, uh, I need your attention. Because if you don't respond to me, then I'll block you. H, I want him to respond. Let me interact with this Muhammad. Because I'm going to use him to embarrass Muhammad. He's going to spit on Muhammad when I'm done with him. Now, H, beating your wife, it's bad, right? Beating your wife is bad? H? Okay. So do you now spit on Muhammad and your God for allowing Muhammad and Muslims to beat their wives? Chapter 4, verse 34. Do you now agree with us? Because you said it's bad. I spit on Muhammad and Muhammad's God because in chapter 4, verse 34, Muhammad's God, who's the devil, who molested Muhammad spiritually, says that men can beat up wives that are rebellious. So do you agree with me that you should spit on Muhammad, flush the Quran down the toilet, and spit on Allah? Yes or no? No, I didn't misinterpret anything. Chapter 4, verse 34, show me, H, I know you are a satanic bastard like Muhammad. Show me in chapter 4, verse 34, where it says, beat your wives with miswak. You want me to embarrass you and quote the hadith? That men beat their wives with their hands and left bruises on them? Okay, show me in chapter 4, verse 34, Surat Nisa, where it says, hit your wife with miswak, gently. Show it to me, you wicked satanic dog. You make Muhammad look good. Show it to me. Because thank you now, thank you now for condemning them. Guys, send H a rose. Say thank you, H. You're not man enough to give us your name. You're less man than Aisha. But according to you, you just spit on Muhammad and Allah, and you bury them in hell because they commission men to beat their wives, which means according to you, Muhammad is a dog. Send him a flower. Say thank you, H. Thank you. Yeah, baby. Yeah, H. Now, H, quote the hadith from Bukhari and Muslim where it says, you beat your wives with miswak. Quote, give me the hadith of your prophet, that son of the devil, that you just spit on for being a white beater and molesting a nine-year-old. May God damn him to hell in Jesus' name. Show me where he says, beat them with a miswak. Give me the hadith, Bukhari, Muslim. Give it to me. H, you got 10 seconds. Thank you now, H, for being so stupid to falsely accuse me of beating my wife, which is not true, because now you help me embarrass Muhammad, that dog of the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for damning that dog to hell. Destroy his name in Jesus' name. Now send this dog back. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, H. Call me on Skype. Hold on. Before you go. Can you call me on Skype? Because I'm going to give you the tafsir. I'm going to give you Ibn Kathir. I'm going to give you Abu Dawood. I'm going to give you Bukhari Muslim. I'm going to give you Al Wahdi as Baba Nuzul. I'm going to embarrass you. Can you call me on Skype if you're a man? More man than Aisha? Can you call me on Skype? Are you more man than Aisha was when your prophet molested her at nine? Can you call me on Skype? Yeah, don't worry, Ray. I got the Hadith ready. His name is A. Syrian Prince. A. Syrian Prince. Robert. 
He is slime. We ran him off of roasted potatoes because he's slime. He's a traitor. Okay, H, I'm going to prove to you he did. He molested women like your mother, according to Surat al-Nisa 24. All right, let's see if we got a Muhammad in here. Okay, you filthy dog, I'm going to debate you. If you start screaming, I'm going to block you. Pick up, super guy. I'm going to make you super girl. Okay, you have your Quran ready? Your mic is not... You sound like the Quran. Okay, fix your mic. And get your Quran ready. If you scream and bark, I'm going to embarrass Muhammad. So if you love Muhammad, you better not insult. Go ahead. Fix your mic. You sound like the Quran. Are you reciting, uh, reciting Quran? Stop reciting Quran. Stop reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Get your mic working. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes, hello. Hey, hey Sam, Sam. Who is this? Yeah, uh, yeah, I said to you, like, why did you beat your wife, man? Yeah, uh, because I was following Sunnah, brother. Is it okay I follow Sunnah? No, that's it, but why did you do it? So no, but honestly, why, I mean, you uh, you're not listening. I'm following Sunnah. I want to be like Prophet Muhammad. Piss be upon him. Is that okay? Bruh. Bruh, you can you read for me, Sam Bukhari? Wait, 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 wait. You, you want me to hang up on you or you want to listen? You're so dumb. Okay. You're so dumb. Do you want me to hang up or you want to listen? Can I quote you, Sal Bukhari, volume 7, number 715, showing you I'm being a good Muslim, I'm following Sunnah? Can I read it for you? Can you read Arabic? Can you read Arabic? Can, I'm gonna can give you read you... Arabic? Can you read Arabic? Because here's the Arabic. Yes. Hold on. Ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. Let me get you the Arabic so I can expose you. Wait, wait, wait. As I'm doing it, get lick the black stone. Maybe it'll give you some baraka. Hold on. Let me get it for you. But you're going to read the hadith in Arabic, okay? You're going to read it in Arabic. Get ready. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay. Here it is. Read the okay. Arabic. Hey, Arabic. wait, wait, wait. No wait. way. Oh. I'm getting my friend. I'm getting my friend. Oh, oh, you can't read Arabic? He can, he can. Okay, tell him to me. Here it is. Can, can I add him? Can I add him? The, this year before the black stone starts smooching you. Can I add him? Stop yes, for Allah. Rabbul Alameen Muhammad Ibn Kelb. All right, there's the link. Click on it. Click on the link. Do you get the link? You're wasting my time. Click on it. Yes, yes. I Did you click on it? Yes. Read it for me in English. Read it slowly. Okay. okay let me read it. And this guy's not Muslim, thought... by the way. Are you the Jewish guy again, dude? I'm not Jewish. Are you yes. sure? Yes. Say okay. Say no. Forget about it, man. Just go ahead. Go no, 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 no. Say it. Say it. No, no. Forget about it. Just read it, man. Just go ahead. Read. Okay. I know. I, I'm. I'm sure you're not even a Muslim. You're pretending. But go ahead. Read. Uh, I don't know what you're talking. Anyways. Okay. Wait. Are you Muslim? Yes. Okay. Say shahada. Say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul Shaitan. Go ahead. Wait. That's not even the correct way. Okay, say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul Shaitan. There is no God but Allah, Muhammad is a messenger of Satan. Go ahead. Prove you're a Muslim. That's not what it, that's not what it means. Well, what does it mean then? It's your lying okay, okay. Again, man. La ilaha illallah. Okay, say this. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad <laughs> ibn Shaitan, son of the devil. Can you say that? No, okay, then read it. Go ahead. Now, okay, read the hadith now. You're wasting time. Read the hadith. Go ahead, man. Okay. Read it, please. Refa divorced his wife. Where upon... Rahman. Here we go again, man. Why are why you making fun? Dude, you know you're not a Muslim, Dan. You know you're not a Muslim, right? Asper El Khorazi. Sorry, sorry. I've started the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, man. Yeah, he's not a Muslim. He's one of these fake. Yo. Hello? Yeah, who are you? Do you hear me? No, unfortunately, yes. What are you? Uh, I'm a Syrian. Oh, this time, this time, this. Time, this. That, that was the Assyrian guy, Robert, the snake. Be careful of him. This stinking, stinking rat. There he goes. That was him. That's that snake I was telling you about. All right, here, we got this Muslim here. Let's see. Yeah. 
Hello. There we go with the uh, these guys. Yeah, that's guy. That was that snake, man. Man, Robert Good, I saw your face. Man, if ugly was a sin, you would be one of the biggest demons the world has ever seen. Woo, boy, you ugly. You was ugly. No wonder you single, man. Single mingle. Maybe take shahada. You can find your wife, then you can beat her up like Muhammad did. All right. Tatiana, Bassa, Tatiana. Bassa. Shiri Goidatak. What's up, John Cheese? What's up, baby? It's my cousin John Cheese. Uh, well, last week was your birthday, wasn't it? Let me say happy birthday to my cousin because I was waiting for him to show up. I was waiting for him to show up on my live stream so I can wish him happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear cheese boy. Happy birthday to you. How old are you now? How old are you now? How old are you now? You used to look like a cow. Yeehaw! Yeah, what it is. It's my cousin. My cousin. Okay, guys, we're wasting time. These Mohammedans ain't going to do nothing. Tatiana, Bassa, Tatiana. Tadur al Ita. Change your views, Ita. You know what I'm talking about. Because Adi, I'm going to contact you. Don't worry about it. All right, now for the rest of you. Are we ready to go to Isaiah 42? Oh, you want me to do Elvis? Hold on, hold on. Let me see some. Okay. I hope this is not a waste of time. We've already wasted what? 51 minutes? Hold on. It's now or never. Keep praying for me, guys. By the grace of Jesus, me and John Cheese have lost a lot of weight. I ask the Lord Jesus to give us self-control to keep it off. Hold on, hold on. Look, look at this. Look at this. Come on, come on. Look at this. Look at this. Don't hate. Don't, I don't even hit weights anymore. There you go again. Accusing me of sin. We don't want to obey me. Tatiana, eat your heart out, Tatiana. It's now or never. Only thy whisper, my darling. Be one, be one. It's now or never, my love away. It's now or never. Okay. La 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 la. Rasul Khmara. La 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 la. Rasul Khmara. Ya Ibn Kel. All right, thank you. Yeah, what's going on? It's now or never. Oh, we you guys don't know what I was singing. I was saying the uh, Shahada, Elvis style. You guys want to see the Shahada, Elvis style? Here it goes. Elvis. Hold on, man. Let me get this. Whisper, my darling. Be one yeah, okay, here. Let me do. Oh, there. That's it. You know what, guys? Honestly, you see my forearm right here? You think it's hairy. You should see the forearm of some of my Assyrian sisters. Have you ever seen Tatiana's forearm or Bratat and Shikha's forearm? You think mine is hairy? They they make they, they make my farm look like it's bald. Yeah, one thing I gotta admit though, honestly, I don't want to hurt my sisters here, but you know I do love my sisters. My sisters who are Christian and Assyrian, Assyrian sisters, okay, they got some hairy forearms. In fact, they got even some thick mustaches as well. They make us men look like we're bald. So you think this is bad? Just look at Tatiana's forearm and Bratem Shicha. There you go. You think actually? You would actually believe that Bigfoot exists because they make a strong case that they've descended from Bigfoot. These are the daughters of Bigfoot. <laughs> there you go again. La 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 la. Muhammad Rasul Khmara. Muhammad Rasul Khmara. All right. Okay. You guys like that? It's no near. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, before we go, I'll probably just open up the QA. Because we got to start Isaiah 42 from the beginning. Uh, so it is you, huh, Robert? You little snake. Chua. It's you, huh? That's the guy right there. There he goes. It was you, huh? I thought your name was Assyrian Prince. So you are in my YouTube session. The same guy that we ran you off of roasted potatoes. Right? Same guy. That talk smack about us. That was there, huh? It was you. Ah, oh, my teaching isn't bad. So there he goes right there, the little snake. But I gotta admit, Robert, dude, you are one ugly dude. No, honestly, no, no, don't take it offensively. I can't lie to you. I'm your brother. I met some ugly people, but my goodness, bro. You take the cake. Can I start a GoFundMe page, you know, for plastic surgery? We'll start with your nose, your beak. And then we'll work with your eyebrows, right? He, he makes a strong case. Him, Tatiana, him, Tatiana, 
and Bratat Mshicha make a strong case that Bigfoot exists because they are descendants of Bigfoot. Have you seen how hairy they are? This guy's eyebrows, man, they're like, woo, they're like a mile thick. He's got a beak on him. Yeah. If ugly was a sin, bro, you'd be one of the biggest demons walking this earth. All right, now, we're going to just open up the Q&A because, to be honest with you, it's already been an hour into the discussion. It's already an hour into discussion, and I don't want to start Isaiah 42 in this midst. We're going to have to do some a little, a little later. Yeah, I know. David Kano, John Cheese, he lost 70 pounds from dieting or exercise. Wink, wink. Shh. Wink, wink, John Cheese. Oh, yeah. He was on a six-month Nutrisystem diet program, and he was hiking three hours a day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, John. Yeah, between you and me. Uh-huh. We know. We know. The guys took it the easy way out. All right. By the way, I'm going to open up for Q&A. Q&A, if you guys want to ask me questions. But before you call me, I do want to talk about Jiru as a language of love. Jiru as a long language of love. I will do a session on Isaiah 42. I will do a session on Isaiah 42, but I can't do it right now because already one hour went by doing nothing. But I'll open up the Q&A. But before you call me on Skype, before you call me on Skype or ask me a question, all the Assyrians here will testify. Jiru is the language of love. Now, all the Assyrians put a one because I'm going to say it in Assyrian. And then I'm going to translate for you non-Assyrian haters and losers. All the Assyrians put a one. Snake. Robert, I know it was you, you little snake. At least you, you don't deny you're a snake. All right. Okay, now. For all of you Assyrians, because you're Christians, you can't lie. I know some of you, you're not Jilwaye. You're Tiaraye, Khumnaye, you know, whatever you are. You're still losers in my book. But be honest now. You're Christians. Be honest. Okay. There is no more beautiful language to romance a woman than the Jilu language. Here. This is what we do. And now even Tatiana is going to bear witness. She, her heart's going to melt. Right. And she's going to be asking my hand in marriage. If MG knew Assyrian, she'd be running to marry me. But MG doesn't know Assyrian. Okay. Anyway, here. Khalli o shuprach. Enach achal Come on now. See, the Assyrians got it. Bye, bye. Oh, bye, 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 bye. You know what I just said? What did I say? I'm going to give you an English translation. No, nothing more romantic than the Jilu. I said, I will eat your beauty. I will eat your eyeballs. You blind, deaf. If you dare look at someone else, I will pluck the eyes from your father's head and I will take a cane and bust your head with it. I will eat your mustache, your whiskers. That's Jidu for you, baby. That's what I just said. All right. Any calls, call me. Ladies are lining up to ask my hand in marriage. Okay. Any calls? Call me on Skype if you have a question. All right. Here we go. What's up, Sansom? You're always victorious. Hi, Sam. How's it going? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was going. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sam, I have a question about uh, uh, what does Bible teach about self-defense? Uh, because uh, um, it was about a year ago, I was out with my family, and uh, there was a guy who attacked me, and I retaliated. Good man. And when, when I was telling a story to one of my friends who happens to be a Muslim, and he immediately told me, are you not told to turn the other cheek? And Good man. Say, you know what, here. You know, if they ever tell you that again, the Muslims say, look, I already turned the other cheek. I ran out of cheeks. What am I supposed to do? Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if someone hits you on the right cheek, you give him your left cheek, right? Yeah. Okay. We already did. I ran out of cheeks. Now what's what do I do after I give him my left cheek? Then I give him I give him a backhand of my own. You get my point? 
I see. No, no, anyway, just put that aside, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, your Muslim friend misquoted the verse. Jesus is not talking about self-defense right there. In the context, Jesus is talking about if someone insults you and belittles you, what you do is you don't retaliate. You endure the insult and belittling. But that Jesus doesn't mean doesn't mean that you can't defend yourself. When you go to Luke 22, open up your Bible, Luke 22, 35 to 38. Okay. That's that's misinterpretation of the text, right? Yeah. Uh, Man, you, Luke 22, can I ask you something? What kind of computer are you using? Uh, just using a laptop. Because the way you pound those keys, it's like you're trying to beat a Mohammedan jihadi. Remember, <laughs> okay. the, the keypad... Uh, so before you read it, the keypad is your friend. The way you're pouncing on it, it's like you had a Muhammad and jihadi who came up on you and you're beating the life out of him, beating him to repentance. Be gentle to the keypad. They're your okay. friends. They well, don't they, work against you. But now, Luke 22, well, it looks 35, like, it looks 38. like there are two of them because I'm using an extra keyboard. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. okay. So you got an next one. So I can just beat the sense out of one. Okay, go ahead. Go to Luke 22, 35, 38. Okay. So it says, uh, NIV. Uh, Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles, Lord, it over them. And those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. And you are not to be like that. My friend, Instead, which part of Luke 22, Luke 22, 35, 38 wasn't clear? Uh, I'm sorry, I was reading 25. I'm no, sorry. man. No good, no good. Problem, man. <laughs> okay. Then Jesus asked them, uh, when I sent you without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag, and you don't have a sword, sell your scope and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. All right. Well, why'd you stop there, brother? That was, uh... Uh, the disciples said, see, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. Okay, now. Notice what Jesus said. That's enough. If you read the Greek, it means that's more than enough. It's sufficient. So Jesus is saying the time will come where you're going to have to provide for yourself, take care of yourself, and defend yourself. If you don't have a sword, that's a dagger that they would carry with them, and it was multi-purpose. You could use that to you know, cut up food. You can use that to defend yourself because when you travel from place to place, you always risk being <clears throat> jumped by highway robbers, highway bandits, who would try to attack you and kill you to steal your possession. And how do I know that was common back then? Go to Luke 10 and read 30 to 38. Luke 10, 30 to 38. Okay. Okay. In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And when he was attacked by robbers, they He was attacked by what? Robbers. See, in that time, it was a fact of life that when you travel from place to place, you always risk the possibility of robbers jumping you, beating you, if not killing you, to steal your possessions, right? Mm -hmm. You see that in Luke 10, 30, 38. So what is yeah. Jesus saying? <clears throat> I'm going to be taken away from you for a short while. So in the meantime, provide for yourselves and make sure to <clears throat> defend yourselves if need be. So they understood that Jesus saying, make sure you have all that you need to defend yourselves and to take care of yourselves now that I'm away. And they go, Lord, we have two swords. And in the Greek, if you look at it, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let the pacifists who try to explain this passage away tell you it doesn't mean this. It means that is sufficient. That is sufficient. Okay, so that's number one. Jesus did not condemn the apostles for carrying swords or more, more correctly, daggers. That's number one. Further proof he didn't <clears throat> condemn them for carrying it. What was the apostles doing with swords to begin with? Did you catch it? They have swords with them, right? Yeah. What were they doing with swords to begin with? Didn't they get the message they're supposed to <clears throat> not carry arms? Of course not. To further confirm that point, where did Peter get the sword to chop off the ear of Malchus, the high priest servant? Yeah. Okay. He, he had it, right? Yeah. And then if you read Matthew, Luke, and John, Jesus doesn't say get rid of it. He goes put it back in its place. I see. Okay, now he said put it back in its place because Jesus' point there 
It's not that you can't carry weapons to protect your life or the life of your loved ones. You cannot impose God's rule upon people through the threat of violence. That's a different context. So Peter thought he could stop the will of God from taking place, that Jesus had to die, by force and violence. And what Jesus is saying, no, I don't need you to protect me. I can call 12 legions of my father's angels, Matthew 26, 50 to 54. Read that for me. To protect me, Matthew 26, 50 to 54. But I've come to die in order to bring about the salvation of God's people, right? Yeah. So what Jesus is saying, as you go to Matthew 26, 50 to 54, and as you beat the snot out of your keyboard, which we can hear <laughs> miles away, Jesus is saying, as a Christian, I cannot use force and violence to impose God's will on anyone. I'm not a Muslim in that sense. But as a Christian, I have all authority to defend my life and my family's life from those who seek to kill me or my family. That's two different contexts. Now, read Matthew 26, 50 to 54. Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the man stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Huh? Put your sword back in its place. Jesus Wait, what said. did Jesus say? Put your sword back in its place. Why did he say get rid of it? Don't be yeah. carrying it. You shouldn't have weapons on your body, on your possession. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Um, Keep going. Okay, all I, yeah, I would like to ask you afterwards, uh, what does Jesus mean by it? Uh, do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more, more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? So what was Peter doing with a sword? And why did Jesus say, put your sword back in its place? Why didn't he say, get rid of it? Yeah, because Jesus was, uh, he didn't mean to uh, like throw the sword away, but to use it for self-defense. No, not in to this use case. it lawfully. No, when to use it, when not to use it. Those who try to gain the upper hand and impose their will by the sword, they too will die by the sword. Because if your life is characterized by violence, guess how your life will end? My life. That's what he meant. All who live by the sword will die by the sword. We don't live by the sword of man. We live by the sword of the spirit. And that sword is impenetrable, right? But so that's what Jesus is saying. Those whose life is characterized by violence, they will have a violent end to their life. I see. You understand? Okay. So there's a difference. Yeah. But is everyone, not only you, everyone in the chat, seeing Jesus did not condemn his apostles from carrying weapons for self-defense. He condemned them from misusing those weapons, Right? Yeah. You there now? Go to John 18. I want you to read 19 to 23. John 18, 19 to 23. My friend, please. I'm you're breaking my heart. You're beating the keypad. <laughs> please have mercy on the keypad. Oh, be yeah. still, my heart. Yeah, I'm trying to be gentle now. Man, okay. you are very mean, very not nice. Yeah. Okay, meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciple and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Okay, now Is pause right there, brother. Pause. Yeah. If Jesus meant literally, he who strikes you on your right cheek, give him the left. That means Jesus is going to give him his other cheek, right? Yeah. Now, but read what Jesus' response is. Read what the servant did. Read it one more time. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? How come Jesus didn't turn the other cheek, guys? Yeah, Jesus, in fact, um, asked him, why did you do that? Yeah, why did you hit me? What right do you have to strike me? Because that's what happens when you take Jesus' words out of context and misunderstand them. So what did Jesus mean when someone slips on the right cheek, give him the left? In the context, it's metaphorical for if someone insults you, like, for example, I insult your mother and I insult your wife and your kids. Don't be nasty and respond in return. Just eat it up. Give him your other cheek. Let him keep insulting you. Do not repay evil for evil. 
That's the point of that expression, right? I see. Now, let me give you another example where Paul himself appeals to armed protection. Paul, a citizen of Rome, appeals to armed protection. 200 soldiers armed with weapons ready to kill anyone who would make an attempt on Paul's life. Acts 23, 12 to 23. Acts 23, 12 to 23. There goes the keyboard, fourth keyboard. I'm going to have the funeral services for your keyboard. Acts 23, 12 to 23. Second. Hey, Andrew Martin wants to know if you're married to that keyboard because you'd be a good Muslim because you keep beating her up like, like a Muslim husband beats his Muslim wife. But go ahead, go ahead. Acts 23, 12. Okay, uh, so from verse 12. The next morning, some Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. More than 40 men were involved in this plot. They went to the chief priests and the elders and said, why have taken a solemn oath not to eat anything until we have killed Paul? Now then you and the Sanhedrin petition the commander to bring them, to bring him before you on the pretext of wanting more accurate information about his case. We are ready to kill him before he gets here. But when the son of Paul's sister heard of this plot... So Paul's nephew, the... now pay attention. When Paul's nephew, the son of his sister... Guys, Paul has a sister. This is his sister's son, his nephew, found out that the Jews had sworn an oath. Pay attention. The Jews yeah. had sworn an oath. They will not eat or drink until they kill Paul dead, until they murder Paul. So then Paul's nephew told Paul this is what they're plotting. So then what did Paul tell his nephew to do? Uh, he went into the barracks and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the commander. He has something to tell him. So he took him to the commander. The centurion said, Paul, the prisoner, sent for me and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took the young man by the hand, drew him aside and asked, Was it a, What is it you want to tell me? He said, Some Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul before the Sanhedrin tomorrow in the pretext of wanting more accurate information about him. Don't give in to them because more than 40 of them are waiting in ambush for him. They have taken an oath not to eat or drink until they have killed him. They are ready now, waiting for your consent to their request. The commander dismissed the young man with the warning, don't tell anyone that you have reported this to me. Then he called two of his centurions and ordered them, get ready, Okay, now, before you go on, how many centurions? Two. Now, a centurion was the commander of 100 soldiers. So he commanded two centurions, meaning two commanders who had 100 soldiers each, meaning a total of 200 soldiers. 200 soldiers to get ready to kill anyone who would try to kill Paul. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. Get ready a detachment of 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen to go to... Uh, 200 to spearmen? Yeah. So Paul's got 200 soldiers trained to kill warriors who know how to kill because they kill for a living, who live by the sword and some of them die by the sword, ready to kill the Jews without mercy who are trying to kill Paul. But I thought, Paul, Paul... What happened to turn the other cheek, Paul? Keep going all the way. 23, finish it. Uh, Spearman to go to uh, Caesarea at 9 tonight. So you read it all? You saw it? Yeah. Okay, so if you read the Bible in context, where does the Bible say you have no right to defend yourself or your family from threat of violence? Someone trying to kill you guys. Or someone trying to, let's say, um, oppress a child or your wife raped them. You think God is going to say, good for you. You just sit there and looked at a woman getting raped. Excellent. You, you make my heart, you know, feel proud. Of course you have a right to defend yourself. And you know why the Muslim told you turn the other cheek? You, you don't understand the strategy of the Muslim, do you? No, I was actually, um, I actually told them that by your standards, I should have waged a jihad on them, right? No, you, you know what it is? Not their standard. The Muslim wants you to be stupid enough to think you have no right to defend your family, your lands, and your property so they can come in and take over your land, your property, and your women and children, rape your women, and enslave your children. They're hoping you're that stupid that you do not know you have a right to fight 
and killed to protect your lands, your property, and your children and your wives. I see. It's their strategy. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for it. Okay. Got so it. do you see, uh, biblically, you are within your right. In fact, let me ask you a question. America was supposedly built on Judeo-Christian principles, right? Yeah. And this nation that's based on Judeo-Christian principles, okay, gives us the Second Amendment, which means the right to bear arms. So either these people were stupid, biblically illiterate ignoramuses, not knowing that the Bible says you're never to bear arms, or they knew the Bible thoroughly, that they knew it was a God-given right for a man to bear arms to protect himself, his wife, his children, his land, and property. I see. I think that their case is that if somebody used this unlawfully, they try to make a case that, Okay, it should be forbidden for everybody no, to, to keep it. An abuse of a right doesn't mean that you then negate that right. Don't fall for that. Yeah. Just because you have people who abuse the rights God has given us doesn't mean we rescind those rights. We punish those who abuse those rights. But those rights are in, in, in alienable because they're from God, not from man. I see. Okay. You get my point? Yeah. Did you get your answer? Yeah, I got it. Uh, I have another one. Go ahead. If you, okay. Uh, so I have another question about the, the, the head covering that explained by Paul. Uh, in one of his letters. Yes, 1 Corinthians yeah. 11, verse 10. Read it for me. 1 yeah. Corinthians 11, verse 10. He's talking okay. about women's covering, their head covering. Oh, 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 oh. I have to sing while you're doing that. I'm gonna have to sing. I'm gonna have to sing to your keyboard just to make your keyboard feel better after all the abuse you're putting it through. But go ahead. Okay, first in the land was verse ten. Okay, it is for this reason that a woman ought to have authority over her own head because of the angels. Yeah. So why does she have an, a, a sign of authority over her head, the veil, for the sake of the angels who are presiding, right? Yeah. So. For those of you who don't know the context, in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 4 to 10, Paul says, it is unlawful for a woman to pray or prophesy with her head uncovered. So her head has to be covered, whereas a man, it's unlawful for a man to pray or prophesy if his head is covered. For the man is the image and glory of God, and the woman is the glory of man. So a woman ought to cover her head. For whose sake? For the sake of God. Right, and the angels presiding to show that she's in compliance and submission to God's will. You guys understand the context now? A woman in the assembly of believers must show her submission to God out of honor of God and respect for the angels presiding by having a covering over her head because if she uncovers her head, she dishonors God, disrespects the angels, and then she should just shave her head off if she's not going to cover it. But if she shaves her head off, that's a sign of rebellion, and according to many commentators who studied the historical, cultural context, a woman who shaved her head was a prostitute, and a moral woman, a prostitute. So no godly woman would do that, shave her head as a sign of rebellion, as a sign that she's a prostitute, because then she dishonors the Lord she claims to worship. So guess what, women? Have your head covered. Okay, now he's asking okay. me, should women have their hair covered? Of course. Women must have their head covered because the Bible says so. But here's the question for those of you listening. Here's the question for those of you listening. Is the covering a veil that they put over their head or is the covering their long hair? That's a debate among Christians. But before we engage that debate, I want you to read 1 Corinthians 11 carefully, carefully. Because is he talking about all the women in the congregation or women who are married? If you read 1 Corinthians 11, 4 to 10, who is he talking about? Single women or married women who have a man as their head and guardian and to show honor to her headship, meaning her husband, she must be veiled. Yeah. So it leaves the question of single woman open. He doesn't address it. Now, just because he doesn't address it, 
that doesn't mean single women are free to be unveiled. He doesn't address it. You get my point? Yeah. So when Paul doesn't address it, when Paul doesn't address it, that doesn't mean that single women are free or single women are bound. As far as the text is concerned, he doesn't address it. So from the text, I can't answer that question. Are you with me there? Yeah. So if you ask me, should single women be veiled from 1 Corinthians 11? I can't answer that question because he's not addressing that question. He's addressing the issue of married couples, husbands and wives. A wife should be covered to show honor for her head, who's the man. How do I know? Because in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, he says, the head of every man is Christ. The head of Christ is God, and the head of woman is man. What he means is the head of a married woman is her husband. Okay. Right? Because I'm not the head of your wife, am I? No. And you're not the head of someone else's wife, right? No. Nor am I the head of your daughter, right? Yeah. Nor am I the head of your sister. Yeah. So you have to read Paul in context. Paul is talking about married men and women. Married men and women. Ex-Christian, I'm going to make you an ex-human. I'm going to make you a gorilla, a monkey, sucking on a banana if you don't stop calling. I'm going to stuff that black stone down your throat and through Muhammad's anus. Be patient, you pagan. I'll get there to humiliate you in a minute. All right, now, for you, are you listening? Yeah. Okay, so number one, it's addressing married women. That's number one. Now, that leads me to the second point. If we read Paul in context, if we read Paul in context, if you read verses <clears throat> 6 to 10, you're going to get a very incomplete picture. Like Louisa Campbell, my sister, said, it is the veil. But hold on. Let's see what happens if you read 6 to 10 and stop. Now read for me 1 Corinthians 11, 6 to 10. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have her hair cut off. But if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, then she should cover her head. Right. A man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But woman is a glory of man. For men did not come from women, but women from men. Neither was man created for women, but women for men. It is for this reason that a woman ought to have authority over her head. Okay, now, did you see? Angels. No, no, stop right there, my friend. Uh, give me verse 11. Before I lay hands on you. If I stop there, you get a very distorted picture of Paul. Paul almost sounds like a misogynist. He hates women. Paul sounds like Muhammad. Because what does he say? Man wasn't created for woman. Woman is created for man. Woman is the glory of man. So she should be veiled to show that she's sub sub in submission to man. If I stop there, it almost sounds like Paul thinks men are better than women. This is what happens to one verse Charlie's. You only read one verse and ignore the context. So now let's see what Paul goes on to say. Let's see him complete the picture. That was verse 10, right? Now let's read 11 and 12. Nevertheless, in the Lord, women is not independent. Hold on. Of Before men. you go on, hold on, brother. Hold on, pause. Gladys, it is a command. Don't tell me it's not a command. Don't pontificate in your ignorance. It is a command. It's saying a woman ought to have a veil because of the angels. Please, don't play with the text. Don't debate me on this. Now, let's read verses 11 and 12. Okay. Nevertheless, in the Lord, women is not independent of men, nor is man independent of women. As For as women came from, from men, so also man is born of women. Oh, so but he completes the picture, huh? Yeah. So if I just read 7 to 9... Man wasn't made for woman, woman was made for man. But now when I read 11 to 12, nevertheless, see that word, nevertheless. In other words, this is true, but incomplete. So now let me complete the picture. Read verses 11 to 12 one more time. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of women. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. See, he completes the picture. It is true that the first man wasn't made for the woman. And that the woman came out of the first man. But now, every other man comes out of a woman. Why? So God can teach you, men cannot live independently of women. And women cannot live independent of men. Men and women are interdependent. And God designed it that way. 
so they can realize you can't have one without the other, and both of them need God for all things. So he completes the picture, but then he goes on to complete his thought about veiling. Keep reading now to 16. Judge for yourself. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God without her head uncovered? Does not the very nature of things teach you that if a man has long hair, it is disgrace to him, but that if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. For long hair is given to her as a covering. Bam! Right there, buddy. What's her covering? Long hair. You got it. See, if I complete the thought, Paul says her long hair is her covering. But if I stop to 10, then I'm going to get the impression she needs to put a veil. But if I complete the thought, that's why she has long hair and why men can't have long hair like women do. Because the long hair is her covering. It is her glory. It is her beauty. Now keep reading 16. If anyone wants to be contentious about this, we have no other practice, nor do the churches of God. In other words, stop debating me. All the churches of God are in agreement with what I just said. So if you want to go against what I said, then you're going to be the odd man out, and you're going to be in contention with all the churches because this is the established practice of the churches. Now, let me give you some practical application. If you still think... The long hair is not the covering the veil, but that she should have a veil upon her head. That's between you and the Lord. I'm not here to debate you on that because many churches historically have made it an issue, a mandatory practice that women put a veil over their hair, whether long or short. And if you go to a church that says that, honor your church, submit to that command because it doesn't hurt right, to follow yeah. that command. Okay, exactly. that's number one. Number two, if you are convinced the long hair of the woman is her covering, let me tell you the practical impl implication of that. That means if a woman has long hair, that's her covering. But what if she has short hair? Then she should use covering. Bam! Say it again, Sam. Yeah. Then she should use covering. Thank you. There you go. So that's okay. my answer to your question. Okay, okay, I... Uh, okay, I was I was thinking along the same line because uh, what what I observed that especially the churches from the east side east side of the world and the churches in the Middle East, I thought that it is due to the cultural influence. Uh, but later on, when I saw that okay, churches in in Europe and on the west side, like it's not a very common practice here. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know what does no, the it, scripture it, teach about that? Don't use culture, uh, even though at the time of Paul. The, the cultural practice was if a woman shaved her head, that's a sh sign of her rebellion or that she's a prostitute. And that was disgraceful even to that culture. But Paul takes it beyond culture. You know what he says? For the sake of the angels. First yeah. Corinthians 11, 10. Angels are transcultural, meaning angels are not simply a cultural phenomenon. Angels are there in all generations of Christians till the end of the age, irrespective of time or culture or custom. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. So why does Paul say you should have a covering? As a sign that you are in submission to the authority that God has ordained upon you and the presence of the angels who are presiding and watching over your worship and will answer to God and give a report to God for your conduct in the church. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 10. Yeah. Okay. But let me just correct Nebuchadnezzar, Aziz at Libby. Samson... If he had long hair, it's because he was consecrated per the Nazarite vow. Those were exceptions. Nazarites were exempted from this rule because part of the Nazarite vow consecration is they wouldn't take a razor to their head. But he was a Nazarite. That's an exception, Nebuchadnezzar, you wicked pagan heathen. Repent like you did in Daniel 4 and start worshiping the true God. Anyway, did I answer your question? Yeah, that's all. Good man. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. And now do me a favor. Leave your keyboard alone for two weeks. Let your keyboard recover from the abuse. Yeah, I will, I will hug it right now. All right, okay. brother. Thank you. Good questions. I hope I answered them thoroughly, and I trust the Holy Spirit to guide us in all truth, save me from error, loosen my tongue to speak truth for the glory of Jesus, to bless you, the people of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, buddy. I don't care what that is. Hey, I like that. He hung up before I could say goodbye. Good. Thank you, Samson. That's it. You're done, buddy. Even though you got a good name.
Hey, uh, ex Christian, do you, want, do you want me to spit on Muhammad now or later because you're not patient? Hey, man, what's going on, bro? Come okay, on, one more say time. something. Don't let me hang up on you. Do you want me to spit on Muhammad now or later because you're not patient? Hey, shit. Hi, man. I'm so sorry, bro. Shut hey, shit, shit. Hi, shit, shit. What's that shit, shit? What are you speaking? Th speak English. I'm English. so sorry. Okay, I'm do you so have your sorry. Quran now that you made us wait 20 minutes in the Discord? Uh, excuse me? Do you have your Quran now that you made us wait 20 minutes in the Discord? Uh, 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 I'll be third. I'll be third. I'll get the Quran. Do you have your Quran ready now? You know, that's, that's pretty mean, bro. Does the Bible Okay, do you want me to hang up mean. on you and spit on Muhammad? Because okay, Muhammad's right okay, women. Fine. I'm sorry. There, let's see. Hold on. If you don't get pain, you're not patient, I will send you to the moon. Which the demons are manifesting. Guys, I'm gonna start blocking every one of you. You guys are coming, you're going on the block list now. Block! 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 You keep calling me, I'm gonna block all of you. Here. Call me again, guys, and watch me block you guys. Call me again, please. Make my day. So I can block you guys. Please make my day. Go ahead, tough guys. Call so I can block you. Stupid people, dude. Can't even be patient. Stupid, Andy. Hold on. One more chance, ex Christian. I'm going to make you ex human. I'm going to turn you into a gorilla, into an ape. Okay, uh, ex baboon. Now turn gorilla. Are you ready? You got your Quran, or let me hang up on you? You got your Quran? You got your toilet paper or no? Okay. Right, let's let's block this guy. Sam Shamoon fan, I'm gonna send you back to Asheron. Hold on. Stupid demon, huh? What's up on an Asher? Shut up. Block! Bye-bye, Sam Shimon! Bye-bye! Sam Shimon fan! Bye-bye! Yachmara! Khulkar Yachmara! Block! Let's go, we're gonna have a block fest, guys! Block! Okay, let me see. Block! Every one of you who call are getting blocked, so keep calling, I'm blocking you, because you're not patient. Block! Who's next? Who wants to get blocked next? Okay, Ralphie Thomas, I'm blocking you too, buddy. Enjoy your block, Ralphie. Block! Because you guys can't wait. See? Yeah! How do you guys feel now? Go ahead. Say hello to my little friend. Oh! Say khulkhari, khmari. Oh. All right. Okay, folks. That's what happens. You guys can't wait. You can't. Guys, I want to do a session on Isaiah 42, God willing. Lord willing, but it's going to have to be tonight. I think we'll just wrap it up right now. Right? So, Lord willing, at midnight, midnight, New York time, Michigan time, Eastern Standard time, Muhammad confirms that Jesus is a servant of Isaiah 42. So I know for some of you, that's going to be afternoon morning, evening on the other side. I know in New York and Michigan will be late, but it's a Saturday, guys. Stay up for it. Thank God we have 530 people. 530 people, glory to Jesus. I want to see 600 tonight. Bring them back. Bring them back for the glory of Jesus Christ. Hope you're blessed, all right? Let me now end it again, speaking the language of love. Assyrian, you know how French is supposed to be the language of love? Gilu is the language of love. Okay, let me give. I'm gonna now lines up. Tatiana, خلي أن شوريبك تاتيانا. أخلن ولا مستت إيداخ. إن لا خشوت لي قارة. شاق ما قبال القصة دريشة بابخ. شمالخ. خلي أن شوريبك خلي خلي تاتي تاتي وتاتي. ده هي مرة بابخ إيه. 
All right. Okay, guys. God willing, I'll see you tonight. The Assyrians know what I just say hello to my little friend. You're going to get blocked. No, oops, I was going to say, Khulkhari. Khmari. Guys, I almost said Khulkhari Tiari. I didn't mean that. Khulkhari. Khmari. Agamini. Agadutto. All right, guys. See you tonight. Lord bless you guys. I'll see you tonight.